The Walton family is the richest family in the world with a net worth of $244 billion. The family controls Walmart, which are the hypermarkets around the globe. Walmart is the largest company in the world with annual revenue of $572 billion and employs over 2.3 million workers. Walmart was founded by Sam Walton, who was born to a poor farmer. From his first job with a salary of $75 per month, he laid the foundation of the world's largest retail chain, Walmart. Want to learn how Sam Walton did it? Watch the full video. Sam Walton, founder of Walmart and Walton family worth $244 billion. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Sam Walton was born on March 29, 1918 in Kingfisher, Oklahoma to Thomas Gibson and Nancy Lee. His father was a farmer but later went to work with his brother at Walton Mortgage Company to earn more income for his family. While Sam was young, his family moved around often from one Missouri town to another. This meant that he had to change schools severally. In eighth grade, Sam became an Eagle Scout, the youngest in Missouri history. His family eventually settled in Columbia, Missouri, where Sam attended David H. Hickman High School. When not at high school, Sam did house chores and ran errands to help generate more income for the family. He milked cows and sold the surplus milk, delivered newspapers for the Columbia Daily Tribune, and sold magazine subscriptions. After graduating high school, Sam went to the University of Missouri. He worked several jobs while studying economics, including waiting tables. At school, he joined the Beta Theta Pi fraternity, Zeta Phi fraternity, and in his senior year, joined Scabbard and Blade, the National Military Honor Society. Sam also led the Burrell Bible class at the University of Missouri. He graduated from university in 1940 and was voted the class permanent president. After graduating in 1940, Sam Walton got his first role in retail working as a management trainee at J.C. Penney in Des Moines, Iowa. He earned $75 monthly. He worked at the retailer for about one and a half years before resigning in 1942 to join the military. He worked in the U.S. Army Intelligence Corps at Fort Douglas in Salt Lake City, Utah, overseeing security operations at aircraft plants. He left the Army in 1945 with the rank of captain. In 1945, at age 27, Walton committed $5,000 of his own savings and borrowed $20,000 from his father-in-law to take over a variety store in Newport, Arkansas. The store was part of the Ben Franklin franchise. It was here that Walton pioneered what would be the hallmark of all his future retail endeavors, unbeatable value. Walton offered products at prices better than his competitors, with the expectation that he would make up for lower margins with higher volume. He further gave customers optionality, stocking shelves with a broad variety of goods. In his first year, the store did $80,000 in sales. Three years later, it was doing $225,000 in revenue. By 1949, his store was the best-performing Ben Franklin franchise in Arkansas, doing more than $250,000 in sales. Walton's success drew the interest of his landlord, who had a family history in retail. He tried to take over the store, but Walton was not selling, so he denied him a lease renewal. Walton had to look for a new location to open another store. With the help of his father-in-law, Walton successfully purchased the new store in Bentonville, Arkansas. It was another Ben Franklin franchise. Having learned from his experience in Newport, Walton insisted on getting a 99-year lease on the new property. He renovated the store and had a grand opening on March 15, 1951. In the first year of operations, the store did $75,000 in sales. In the following years, this increased to $105,000, then $140,000, and $175,000. In 1952, Walton opened a second store in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and hired Willard Walker to join the company as a store manager. With the success of his first two stores, Walton set his sights on expanding the business. In 1953, he bought a small airplane and together with his brother James Bud Walton, began flying it to scout for new locations to open stores. In 1954, the two opened a store in Ruskin Heights, Kansas City, Missouri. 
They continued expanding the family business over the years, and by the end of the 1950s, they owned eight stores, bringing in over $1.4 million in annual revenue. Walton put managers in charge of the stores and encouraged them to take equity positions in the businesses, so their interests were aligned. He also made frequent, unannounced visits to the stores to see what innovations managers were using and shared these with other store managers. By the early 1960s, Walton owned 15 stores. However, he was dissatisfied with the sales volumes and believed the business ought to be bringing in more. He made a plan to cut prices even further to attract more customers. The idea was not entirely new. Discount stores existed at the time but only in big cities. They also tended to discount only specialty items. However, Walton wanted to build large stores in small towns and discount everything stocked. Walton approached the Ben Franklin franchise owner with his idea, but they were skeptical and unwilling to slash their margins. He decided to bet on himself, mortgaging his home to open the first Walmart in Rogers, Arkansas in 1962. It was called Walmart Discount City. He then hired Don Whitaker to manage the store. Enticed by the many discounts at the Walmart store, rural shoppers flocked it and sales soared. The success of this store provided Walton and his brother Bud with funds to open new stores. In 1964, they opened two new stores in Harrison and Springdale, Arkansas. In 1965, they opened a fourth Walmart in Siloam Springs, Arkansas. In 1966, the brothers opened a fifth store in Conway and the sixth store in Fayetteville, Arkansas. In 1967, they opened the seventh in North Little Rock, Arkansas. By 1967, together with the original Ben Franklin stores, the Waltons operated 24 stores, bringing in $12.6 million in annual revenue. In 1968, the Waltons opened six stores including two in Oklahoma and another two in Missouri. On October 31, 1969, they officially incorporated the company as Walmart Stores Incorporated. By the end of the 1960s, Walton owned 18 Walmarts and 17 Ben Franklin stores. His company employed 900 associates and posted $30.8 million in annual sales. To oversee the Walmart stores better, he installed IBM computer systems at all stores to relay daily sales reports and track inventory. He also paid associates through centralized computer systems, not checks. In 1970, Walmart went public at $15 a share. Walton used the funds to open new stores, reaching 38. He also opened the first Walmart distribution center and home office in Bentonville, Arkansas. Annual revenue hit $44.2 million in 1970. In 1971, Walton increased the store count to 51, employing 2,300 associates. Annual revenue was $78 million. A year later, his store count reached 64 and he listed the company on the New York Stock Exchange. Walton continued expanding the family business all through the 1970s, reaching 276 stores in 1979. By then, Walmart had more than 21,000 associates and brought in over $1.24 billion in annual sales. All this time, Walton was still championing low retail prices and great customer service. To maintain profitability, he had Walmart stores open within a day's drive of Walmart regional warehouses and build an internal truck distribution network to service stores. He also leveraged technology, introducing barcode scanning in stores and establishing a private satellite communication system to link all operating units with the home office through audio and video. In 1983, Walton launched Sam's Club to cater to small retailers with bulk merchandise. In 1984, Walton led Walmart to acquire U.S. Woolco stores, and by 1985, Walmart had 882 stores grossing $8.4 billion in revenue. That year, Forbes ranked Walton the richest man in America with a net worth of $2.8 billion. Two years later, Walmart became the third largest retailer in the United States behind Sears and Kmart. In 1988, Walton announced he was retiring as CEO of Walmart, but would remain its chairman. He left the CEO job to David Glass. 
By 1988, Walmart had over 1,200 stores, 105 Sam's Club, and 16 distribution centers. Sales that year were $20.6 billion. In 1990, Walton was diagnosed with bone cancer. On March 17, 1992, President George H.W. Bush awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. At the time, Walmart had become the largest retailer in the United States with over $30 billion in revenue and locations in Mexico and Puerto Rico. On April 5, 1992, Walton passed away in the hospital. He was 74 years old. Sam and his wife, Helen Walton, were dedicated members of the First Presbyterian Church. Sam served as an elder, taught Sunday school teens, and donated to the congregation. In 1987, while at the helm of Walmart, Walton pioneered the company's relationship with Children's Miracle Network, overseeing the raising of hundreds of millions of dollars to benefit the network's hospitals. Also in 1987, Sam and Helen launched the Walton Family Foundation to support initiatives in education, environmental conservation, and better quality lives for all. Since its inception, the foundation has committed billions of dollars to charitable causes. In 2020, for example, it granted just under $750 million to improve K-12 education, protect oceans and rivers, and build better communities in Arkansas. Sam Walton started from a very humble background. His times changed after marriage when his father-in-law, who was a transporter, not just lent him the money, but also helped him to create the world's best supply chain. In Walton's store, everything was readily available. He created databases of all items available in the store, and he knows in advance what products are needed to stock before they run out. With his brilliant supply chain, he was able to get products at very cheap rates. Instead of taking advantage of high margin, he passed the discounts onto his customers. He made profits on volume rather than on margin, which enabled Walmart to become the biggest company in the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.